Hello there, everyone. How are you doing today? All right, let's get it started. There we go. And let us share. And we'll be good to go. All right. Okay, okay. How are you doing today? Um, so welcome, welcome. If this is your first time, uh, my name is Patricia Hayes. I am an executive advisor, career empowerment coach, and authentic networking strategist. And that means that I love to work with um, ambitious women um, in particular who are uh, seeking to build out their executive presence so that they can up-level their careers and also for those who are seeking to um, develop their professional relationships in a way that's sustainable, that's authentic, and that's meant to last. Again, so that they can uplevel their careers for the long term. And today we are starting with our first flip where we have flipped networking um, career chat with the regular career chat. And so starting today, networking career chats will be held live. So we'll be talking about authentic networking on Mondays live. And Wednesdays will be for the recorded Coffee Time career chat um, for all the other topics. And those are all themed by month and all of that. So that, that will continue. We're just flipping the two um, and giving the networking uh, uh, words an opportunity to go live on a regular basis. So that's what we're doing. And so we're starting off this week talking about building better professional relationships. And um, this came in the context of this month overall, we're going to be talking about diversifying your network, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that later because there's a great masterclass um, that's coming up at the end of the month. But it's also because everyone's kind of getting ready to move about, get back into the, quote, real world of engaging with people one-on-one, um, uh, -on -one, in person, all of that type of thing. And it just came to me, and we'll be sharing that throughout this month, that, you know, maybe we need some refreshers. <laughs> I mean, I had a host of activities last week that just seemed to come out of nowhere. And they didn't come out of nowhere. It's just that everything's really starting to open up and move about. And it was just so interesting that things that we took for granted, we were like stumbling through when we meet people in person and all of that because we hadn't been doing that for so long. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm probably going to pop back in and um, give you a little taste of the conferences and workshop session that I did once before. We'll probably go back through that one. I think that's a good uh, that's a good one to include this month as well. As everyone seeks to re-engage, to start moving slowly in, it's so funny to see people taking pictures of of you know adults with their quote first day back to work. You know, like first day of school pictures. It's hilarious. It cracks me up. But it's really that serious, right? You know, there are still people that we're engaging and we haven't seen or hadn't engaged with certain people for, you know, for like over a year. I mean, I literally saw my own mother for the first time in a year last uh, this past weekend. So all of this takes time. And particularly when it comes to our professional relationships, we want to make sure that we are... Um, you know, doing it in a way that's authentic. And I know I use that word a lot, but we're talking about being real, about being genuine, about being natural when it comes to it. Because really, quite honestly, I mean, like who has time for fake, you know, relationships right now? I mean, we've been through quite the year. I mean, we do not have time for it, right? Um, that's my motto. Anyways, I don't have time for nonsense. I'm, I'm like that right now about a lot of things. So there's no need for that, but it can, we can still do it and have compassion and have fun and, you know, and do things that we enjoy and as, as we reconnect with people 
and realize and learn what it means to us for the long term. So here's the thing. When you're building better professional relationships overall, you have to remember the first core thing, which is you must have a strong foundation to begin with. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Because if you do not have a strong foundation to begin with, it's not going to stand the test of time. And so I know the first thing is like, well, what happens? You know, what does that mean for the relationships I've already have? Well, you can go back and sure them up. Right. You see that happening with real buildings all the time where they're like, oh, the foundation's starting to have a little crack or some things. So you got to go in there and do some things to fix it. You can do that. And we'll talk about those ways and those things um, over the course of this month. But just remember, though, that at the core, the relationships have to have a strong foundation. So what does that mean? It means that if you uh, engaged in that relationship or started that relationship um, with a faulty foundation, as in you went in with the wrong motives, um, you were dishonest, um, you, you you did something that lacked some integrity. So, you know, kind of goes with dishonesty, right? But so maybe it wasn't completely that. But if you went in the wrong way so when you're starting it to begin with, guess what happens? That relationship is never going to be sound, Okay, and so this is an exercise. This is a really good one. I'm going to write this down because we're probably going to have to come back to that. Is 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 if you go take a look back, if you take a look back and try to figure out what do your relationships look like right now? What do those foundations look like? What do you where do you need to shore things up? Okay, and this honest reflection time, which you can take in your handy dandy notebooks or your journals, remember to keep one, um, is it's an honest reflection. This is for you because if you want to do the right thing when it comes to building your professional relationships moving forward, when it comes to engaging with others in a way that will make sure that you can have relationships that stand the test of time, then we have to take some, do some reflection every once in a while. I do it. And sometimes it's planned. Sometimes it's not planned when I notice that something's going awry with a professional relationship. You know, someone that I've known for a while or there's been a shift and you're just kind of like, wait, what just happened there? Okay. So this is something that we really need to do on a regular basis. And I'm going to work, I'm going to think a little bit about that. And maybe that's one of the next sessions that we're going to do is working through an exercise about how to do that and things to look for and things to consider as you determine whether or not it's something that you want to move forward with shoring up because good relationships require work. Okay. It doesn't matter if they're personal ones or professional ones. Good relationships require work. And so you have to decide whether it's one that you want to do the work on to shore up or if you have to, you know, slowly and quietly put it out to pasture. OK, so we can talk about that because I'm having a lot of ideas come up in my head and a lot of different situations where, you know, it happens to all of us. And I remember early in my career having a difficult time when people moved on or whatever, not knowing, quite, not quite sure. But that's when, you know, that's a whole other mindset piece, right? Where it's like, you know, sometimes it really doesn't have anything to do with you. <laughs> sometimes it's all about the other person and whatever it is they're dealing with and whatever they're doing. And so you can make sure that you're still there and available for them if need be. But if not, then guess what? That, that relationship's time has passed. And we'll talk about that some more as well. So you want to make sure that you're building uh, relationships that are on a strong foundation that are not built um, on the things that cause for a shaking foundation, you know, lack of integrity, selfish motives, um, dishonesty, you know, all of those things, they do not make for a good relationship. Okay. Um, and just like they don't in a personal one, they don't work well in a professional one either. People can smell a fraud. They can smell a fake. <laughs> they can sense it. The energy will be off. And even if you're able to get past them and fool them for a little while, it always comes to light. 
right? So if you're really and truly trying to do the right thing, then do it the right thing from the beginning. And if you're not trying to do the right thing, you can turn this off because like, I don't operate that way. <laughs> I'm like, I am not perfect by any means. I make my share of mistakes. However, I do try to make sure that I operate my relationships um, it, with integrity, which will also mean being vulnerable enough to acknowledge when you've, you know, something's off, you haven't done something correctly, you haven't followed through. Well, all of those things are required, okay, for building a strong foundation with your professional relationships, okay? All right, so here we go. You've got that. And the other thing about building a strong foundation is you want to make sure you have a good mixture. This is probably where people have the weak spot, right? You know, when you're, and I know nothing about building, so forgive these horrible analogies, but I do know that when you're mixing concrete in order to like pour, you know, uh, the, the foundation for a, a building, a home, sidewalks, whatever, that there is a certain mixture and consistency that it has to be, that it has to reach in order to know that it will solidify correctly. If it does not solidify correctly, then that's how you can end up with cracks, with um, with weakness inside, and that later gives way. All of those lovely things. I remember in my first house, I will never forget that, is that we have barely been in it six months. And all of a sudden, these hairline hairline cracks start showing up in the in the driveway. And I questioned it. And they're like, oh, well, no, it's fine. It's a little normal. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. At me, me as a consumer, as a customer, I don't understand hairline cracks in a driveway that's six months old. Sorry. So, you know, y'all know how I am. I made them redo it. But anyway, that's another story. But that's that thing. Go back and do it right. Fix it. Make sure you have the right mixture. And when it comes to your professional relationships, what that means is, and this is why we're going to be talking about diversifying your relationships later this month in a masterclass, is you want, if you really want the strongest and the best uh, relationships moving forward for the long term, you got to diversify what it looks like. Or ultimately, in the end, it's not going to look very good or it's not going to last very long. Okay, I don't care what anybody tells you. And I'm not just talking about the obvious things, but I am talking about the obvious things, race, ethnicity, gender, all of those things. But I'm also talking about diversifying your relationships in terms of the types of people, the industries that they come from and they work with, the levels that they are at. Okay, and like I said, we'll talk about that way more in depth. I love that topic. I cannot wait. But we're in terms of building out your foundation, that's another thing that you're going to want to give some serious thought to is and this is part of that exercise of if you're going back and like, do I need to shore up my foundation? One of the things is like, how diverse is it? What does the mix look like? Okay, because if the mix is not good, there are going to be some cracks in it along the way. All right. Okay. So here's the question. How can we make these relationships better? How can we make them stronger? And so here's a couple of things we have. Number one, you have to make sure to nurture your relationships. It seems so obvious, but people, um, they, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, they neglect, that's the word I'm looking for. They neglect their relationships all the time. Personally, professionally, all right? The difference is professionally, it can harm you in the long term when it comes to your career, to your professional goals, all of that. If you do not nurture your relationships. So what do I mean by nurturing? Just like you do with plants or people or whatever, you got to feed it. You got to feed those relationships. And I know, and I've done this, I've talked about this before when, we're, when we've talked about the maintaining your relationship series. But you want to make sure that you put in place a practice for you to be able to reach out or connect with the bulk of your, uh, your network, the core of your network, let me say, on a regular basis. So, you know, you may not be able, you know, let's say you have 2,000 people on, you know, on, you know, your LinkedIn profile. Okay. Okay. Are you going to be able to reach out to all 2,000 of those people personally? Probably not. 
all right? It would take some time. Some of them, you, they're, you know, they're friends of friends or whatever, so you may not have met them one-on-one. -on -one. So there are ways for you to reach out to them, just not the regular. But the core of that network, people that you've known to, for some period of time through, uh, through work, through community service, all of those things, you know, let's say it's 50 or 100 people. Well, guess what? It is completely possible to reach out uh, in a substantial way to 50 or 100 people. Now, you want to know how? That's a different series. I talk a lot about that in my Maintaining Your Professional Relationship series. But, you know, there's a, there's a method to the madness. Even if it's, you know, I say break it down, make it easy. If it's reaching out to two or three people a week, you know, an email, a phone call, scheduling a coffee. We can now do coffee in person, right? Scheduling a virtual coffee. You can still do that. There are so many options and so many ways, but you have to nurture your network. You have to stay engaged with them. You have to, you know, uh, stay connected, and sometimes, you know, there are people in my network who I'm connected with. And let's say that I only talk to them once or twice a year. That's good. You know, like that works for that person. Okay. There are others that I'm used to seeing like once a month. And so if I don't see them, I'm like, or if I haven't connected with them, I'm like, you know what? I haven't talked to so-and-so this month. Let me reach out to them. I did that a couple of times last week. I realized that there were a couple of folks that you know, like we miss each other or something. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but let me reach out. Okay. That's nurturing your network. Okay. You want to make sure, and it's required in order to build a strong relationship that lasts the, you know, for t over time, not just for the next three months, six months, a year. Okay. And with, you know, this past year, like it's a blur. It almost, it's almost like a blip on the screen because so few of us were seeing so few people. So this is a great opportunity to start fresh, to come up and to be deliberate about reaching out and connecting to, with others. Okay. The second piece of a building um, a foundation um, that's strong, that will stand the test of time, is you have to remember to focus on the needs of others. This is a piece that trips people up, okay? Because people normally think, when they hear the word network, the first thing they think of is, what is it going to take? You know, like, oh, I have to go because I need X, right? That is not how we do networking, that's old school, that's the conventional wizards, traditional, whatever, I don't, whatever you want to call it, but it ain't right. <laughs> if you're only focused on what you can get out of the relationship, that is the complete wrong way. And you have to, com you, you, you have to do a complete re, uh, uh, reset on, on, your, on how you approach that. Okay, so what does that mean? It, you know, it's like, well, what does it mean? I thought that's what networking is about. No, networking is really a two-way street, right? All of those things that people have taught you about when you go to happy hour and giving cards and talking people up and like, oh, okay, that sounds like somebody who can help me, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Most of the time, I've all, this is always so fascinating to me. Most of the time, the people that I connect with who end up being able to help me with a certain situation or a problem or a project the most are the ones who don't look the most obvious. Let me say that again. The people who end up being able to help me the most oftentimes with a project, with a, with a situation, whatever, are the ones who, who look the least likely to be able to help me. What do I mean? All right, so you go up and you meet with someone and it looks like they're like, oh, it says that, you know, they do marketing and that they can do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, okay, fine. But then there's like, there's no connection, right? Like when you're just doing it, it's just like salesy. And you're just like, yeah. And, and or maybe they're not very good. But then you go to meet someone who's in a completely different industry and who doesn't seem like, you know, well, I don't know if I should engage with them because they don't really, you know, have what I want right now. But guess what? Let's say that that it turns out that that person's best friend is the chief marketing officer for a large organization and he wants uh, he or she wants to invite you to go out to coffee or go to lunch with them to meet because they, you know, y'all have similar hobbies. 
That is the stuff that happens. Like that is the stuff that happens all the time for me. When I, I, there's nothing like sitting down and having a great cup of coffee with someone or, you know, you're meeting up and just chit-chatting and just digging a little bit and talking to people. You can find out a wealth of information and different things that serve not just you, but other people in your network. That's what it's about. So that means you have to take the time. That's why I always say, like, even before the pandemic, I stopped carrying business cards. They're a waste of time. Because I don't want just anybody. I don't want to just connect with just anybody. So I was always very deliberate. I'll take other people's cards, but I'm not handing them out. And so I'll be like, oh, we, you know, if there's someone that I connect with, oh, let, let's connect up on LinkedIn. Or give me your number. Let's internet. You know, we have these lovely little computers called phones in our hands now. It is so easy to connect. Um, electronically these days or to follow up with people very quickly, all right, and not have a stack of business cards, you know, piling up your desk. So I'll encourage you as we reopen and get back together, like reconsider how you do that as well. But here's the point. I would much rather get five really solid connections going into a group than to get 15 or 20 names from people. Doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good if I didn't get to spend any time with them, learn a little bit more about them, or figure out, you know, there's some other things. They're, because those folks, you can probably look them up on LinkedIn. You can look them up on their company websites and find out that info. But let's find, you know, let's talk about what we find out when we sit down and talk to people. When you have a chit chat, right? When you, you know, find out completely on a whim that, you know, you're both completely obsessed with planning a trip to Italy and how the pandemic really interrupted that. And so now you're talking about how you're adjusting those plans, right? And you're like, but that has nothing to do with the work. Exactly. Most strong relationships over time do not require you to chit chat about work all the time. I have one uh, colleague who I just love to death and it, it, he taught me this some years ago because we would go and I'm like, you know, I'm always like, well, let me be respectful of people's time. We get so he would always start. It's like, how's the family? And I'm like, uh, fine. <laughs> and he's like, how are you? I'm like, I'm good. He's like, well, you know, okay, well, tell me about, tell me about you. What's going on? And we would talk about us and things and then we get to business and so after years, we could sit down and start talking. We're talking about everything but the business part. And then we get to the business part and it's only the last five minutes. Because when you build out those relationships, you can do that. You don't have to take an hour talking about business. When you build out those relationships over time, you can handle the business in probably five or 15 minutes. That's not the point. You could have done that on a phone call. The point is getting to actually connect on a human level and in a way that you will know that I can help meet their needs in other ways besides the obvious business piece of it, okay? Because when you learn that so-and-so's child is going off to college and this is where they're going, you can send them a note. You can send a, you know, a gift card saying, hey, share this with your child. Tell them, you know, it's a congratulations, right? All of these things mean something. It shows that you can pay attention to someone and meet them at their human level. And after this pandemic, my goodness, we all need to be met at a human level. Okay? So think about that. I'm stressing that a lot because you really need to think about how you can meet the needs of others, not just the needs of yourself. Because here's the thing. When you give it really does circle back and return to you. And like sometimes like immediately, you just have, you have no idea, okay? They circle back around. They come back around. I mean, just a, a couple of months ago, one of my old mentees, we hadn't talked in a while, you know? I mean, hello, everyone's been locked down. And even before that, you know, we might have been probably, we'd talk or run into each other a couple of times, two or three times a year and whatever. And, but in, in the middle of this pandemic, two months ago, I get a, I get a message of, Hey, Patricia, how are you doing? Sorry, we haven't talked in a while. I'm just going to get straight to the point. We have this, I, you know, I serve on this board. We're developing this, uh, this, uh, strategy council. 
and um, I would like, well, actually, I don't want to say I would like to um, uh, offer you up. I'm, I have offered you up. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, so I want to get on the phone and talk about that. We hadn't talked in forever, but she was like, I know someone who can do this, right? I know someone we need to have as a part of these conversations as we start to plan out and revisit what we're doing. So let me talk and see if she's interested. Let me, let me see if she's available, okay? That's what building out long-term relationships will do for you, okay? And sometimes you say, well, I don't have two, three years. Well, actually you do. Because if you want to, if you want to have those types of connections to pop up or those type of opportunities to pop up in the future, you have to start working on them today. And guess what? Along the way, fresh opportunities will show up right now in the here and now. So it's not just like, oh, I'm only building for it. You are building for today, but you're absolutely building forward. Okay. Um, and I, I spent some time there because that's one that's really important and a lot of people skip past and always want to focus on what I need. I, I need you to flip that and start thinking about what the people, who the people, uh, the, the people that you connect with, what do they need as well? Because when you do that, it will be reciprocal. It's almost natural for people to say, hey, what's going on in your world? Like, what do you need too? Okay. Um, the third thing, and this is one is sensitive. Right. But it's absolutely part of keeping your foundation, um, your professional relationships foundation strong. And that is recognizing when it's time to move on, because sometimes, you know, it's whether it's because of growth or deterioration of the relationship, it, it can be time to move on. So it might be time to move up and on or it might be time to move up and over, up and out. OK, and that happens. And those can be tough depending on what the relationships but when that happens, you know, it normally happens very naturally when people shift jobs, right? Or if there's a nasty break in a professional relationship, those are hard because you're trying to build out your, you know, say like, where's the trust level there? Who can I still, you know, trust and be able to, you know, to interact with? And so that takes, you know, that takes a little bit to work through it. It's okay, though. It's okay. It's a part of the process. And tr really and truly, you don't, if you think about it, you don't want someone who's no longer interested in contributing to not just you, but your network. You don't want them hanging around because then they'll become a leech. They're not going to give anything, but they're just going to suck you dry. Been there, done that. Okay. Um, and I call them professional leeches. So they, they know how to stick around and draw and draw, but they're not contributing anything to the conversation, to the relationships all of that. And so that sometimes that it, that means it's like it's time to move on. Okay? And there's a you know nice quiet way to make it happen, you know you you engage less, right? You're not they're not a priority on your list whatever. All of those type of things there are ways to manage that. Especially even it's tough especially if you're like if you have mutual friends. You know, I've had this happen several times. It's hard, but it can be done, right? It's like be respectful, but we just don't engage like that anymore, okay? Then there are those where um you, you it's time to move up and over, excuse me, move up and out or um uh, move up and on. I'm losing too many words. Up and on, and let's say let's say someone gets a promotion. And so the relationship kind of goes by the wayside a little bit, but it's only because you're not working in the same place in the same, same space anymore, right? So you're, there's not that constant interaction. But guess what? That just means you can shift that relationship so that maybe, you know, you're making sure that you reach out once a month or, you know, once a quarter to have coffee, to go to lunch or whatever, right? So you can still nurture that relationship just, just recognizing that it has shifted, right? And guess what? Sometimes those circle back around and can be way stronger um, even um, or because you're not working in the same office or the same uh, space anymore, okay? So I've seen that happen as well. So my next point then it, uh, with regard to that is don't burn a bridge unless you really mean it. And I'm very serious about this. Don't burn a bridge unnecessarily. I could probably tell you on one hand the number of people that I have, quote, cut off that I'm like, I will never do business with them ever. 
Like I will not engage in a conversation with them. And those people are because they had like a serious lack of integrity in a situation. They, um, let's say they seriously undermined me in a, in a professional relationship, um, something like that. Something that I considered a serious breach of, of, of integrity, a serious breach um, in a relationship. And I was like, I don't have time for that because that means because there's no trust. Right. There's no trust. And so if I can't trust you, then we don't have anything to talk about because I don't know what you're fixing to do with that information or how you're going to try to leverage it. And there are situations like that. Right. You know, I'm thinking about way back when when I was lobbying or actually I wasn't lobbying. I was on staff for uh, for um, for a member and someone who was in my industry didn't work in my company, but worked uh, in a similar com company in the industry had gone, made a big fuss on some other tangential issue and presented something to my boss in a way that was completely false, like completely false. And so I get called into the carpet. My boss is like, Trisha, what's up with this? And I was just like, I have no idea, but I know he's lying. <laughs> I was like, he's lying. <laughs> that much I know. And I'm like, you want me to go take care of it? Because I was pissed. And he was like, no, 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 I got it. And so my boss, because, you know, he's very smooth and whatever, he took care of it when he went into this meeting. But the problem was that if he had gone in with that knowledge, that without consulting me, that person would have had my boss taking a position in a room full of stakeholders that was contrary to where he would have wanted or needed to be because this person told him an untruth just to manipulate the situation. I can't tolerate that. So from after that, I had nothing to do with that person. Now, did we work in the same industry? Whatever, we absolutely did. I did workarounds, but me sharing information. Remember, I was working in a legislative environment. That's what we do, right? Share information, collaborate, all that. Nope. Nothing. I wasn't doing it. Let's go find someone else from that organization, but I'm not dealing with that person. All right. That's one who's on my list. And like I can, like I said, I can name names and I can probably get, you know, there's probably a handful of people that can say I will never deal with ever again because of how they were um, professionally in some particular situation. Others, even those that I'm just like, oh, I'm not really a fan. I don't cut them off. You know, like, I don't burn the bridge. Now, I might not be traipsing across that bridge a lot. I may not be reaching out to them a lot, but I don't cut them off completely, right? Because that there is that time you never know when things circle back around and you have to reach out to this one person. That's a very personal choice, but it is one that you do recognize is always on the table and will come up. And the thing is, you want to be strong in who you are and to be able to say, I'm not going to deal with that person. We have to find another way or, you know, however it is, or if it has to come to that, like if you have to deal face to face with that person or something, that's a whole other situation. But a lot of times when we're talking about them being in our network, it's just a matter of not engaging, not feeding it, right? So that you're no longer in a point where you're relying on that person for things. You're not giving them access to the rest of your network. Because guess what? If they treated you bad, what they're gonna what are they gonna do? They're gonna treat the other people in your network bad. And guess what? I am extremely protective of my network. Like if I discover that someone that I know that I've put in that I've invited in, right? Not someone who's kind of moseyed in or can't come in third party, but if I specifically invited in and, and learned that they did something to violate a trust of the people that I've worked with for years, done. I'm real I'm really that serious about it. Because I'm a person who has relationships with people in my network right now that are 20 and 30 years strong. Crazy to think about, but it's true, All right? There are people that I know that if I can reach out and need something, I can still call them or they can call me, okay? So that's the value of it. So recognizing, lastly, you know, that was that point when it's time to move on, right? 
And sometimes it's move on and be done. Sometimes it's move on and maybe circle back around. So make sure you don't burn any bridges unnecessarily. Um, and um, again, making sure that you want to focus on quality over quantity. That's another reason when sometimes it's, you know, move people away or move people on. It, it's not a good fit anymore or something like that. Because remember, this is about quality, not quality quantity. And I know that's tough in today's world because on social media, it's all about how many followers do you have and all of this kind of stuff. Well, guess what? When it comes to building out your professional network and one that will last, it's not about the number of followers. It's about the quality of them. Because you can have 15,000 people, but if you can't pick up a phone to call, have them to call them when you need to, to work through something or you need to get a reference for something or whatever, it's not doing you any good. Somebody who has 100 solid relationships could have way better impact. All right. So think about that. You know, that it's not just about how many. It's about the quality of those people that you're connecting with and that you're building out. Because remember, you're building a foundation that's going to last you for your professional career. That's the idea. Okay? All right. That is it, everyone. That is it. Okay, I've been putting out a few teasers. So here's the thing. And it'll be coming out. Hopefully, that link will come out later today. But I'll try and make... If you're interested, just make a comment in the uh, comments below and I'll come back and check. Um, I will be hosting a Diversifying Your Professional Network uh, Masterclass uh, the week, the last week of this month going into July 1st. So uh, I think that's July, um, excuse me, June. Stop, stop the presses. The end of June, we are still in June. <laughs> um, the last week of June, um, 25, 26, I think that's the 28th. Uh, June, Monday, June 28th uh, through July 2nd. All right, that week, it will be live. I've decided to host it over the course of five days because it's going to be a lot of content and I'm bringing in a couple of speakers. So this masterclass will have a fee. Um, it will be $97. Uh, you will have access to the recording um, afterwards for a period of time. And then um, there'll be a workshop, I'm excuse me, a workbook, all of those lovely things. It will be from 11.30 um, to 12.30 Central Time and maybe a few minutes over, but I'm trying to keep it. That's why I'm spreading it out over five days. Um, and like I said, there will be recordings, so you'll be able to come back and catch up and let's take a listen and, and watch over time. I'm super excited about it. This workshop has been on my mind for over the course of the last year and a half, it, it popped up be before everything that happened in 2020. And then as we really got it, I'm like, there's really some value for this here. So I will be hosting that one. I'll be putting out the link. You'll be seeing it. You can sign up for it. It's really going to be very simple. Not nothing crazy, you know, uh, complicated. Literally, it's going to be a link. You can click on it. You can pay and you'll be enrolled and then you'll get your workbook, workbook as we get closer to the event. Um, and we're going to be talking about all those things. We're going to have a session. I'm bringing in a DE&I person who I'm close with who's going to do a little bit of level setting for us. Um, and then we're going to talk about what it means to diversify your professional relationships in a way that brings value um, to yourself, to them, and why, how and why it means something moving forward, particularly in the world that we live in today, um, and how to do it in a way that's sustainable um, and meaningful and authentic. And I am so excited to be able to finally do this workshop. So um, I'll be putting that out. If you're interested, say, you know, put a um, I'm in in the comments. And I will come back and make sure you get a copy of that link or just hit me up in the messages, you know, DM me that you're interested and I'll make sure you get it. And share, 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 okay? Share, share, share. That right now there's not a limit. I will look and see to make sure that we can have capacity to pull as many people in as possible with these, you know, with all this internet stuff. But I wanna make sure that you get an opportunity 
to uh, be a part and to share in the goodness. Okay, so that is it. Thanks so much for joining me uh, this morning for, on the flip flop of moving networking chat to Monday's live. Share, let people know, and um, we will be catching up again soon. All right, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.